I'm here at Knit for an adventure. I've arrived late, I'm covered in mud already, I've got no map and the sun's about to go down. Come and join me. Like that. I'm here at Knit. I've had a bit of a mess today. It all went a bit wrong earlier. I'll tell you about it when we're pitched up. So I've rocked up really late, but it's such a beautiful day, gorgeous weather, and it's so lovely and quiet here. So I've made my way across some pretty ankle breaking ground to get away from the paths. And I'm gonna find somewhere to pitch my tent with gorgeous views of the mountain. And we're gonna have a go at that bad boy tomorrow. Right, let's find somewhere to pitch. I'm gonna go and get some water now before the sun goes down. On. I've just seen tick number one so my tick nightmare for the year has begun um, I'm gonna give myself a good look over brush my hair out and uh, hope for the best really all right I'm all floofy gonna make some food soon and then get to bed so yeah today was completely different to what I had planned I had planned for Kayla Idris and I was gonna have like an amazing two, three night trip there. And I'd planned out my camping spots and my route and everything. So I got there, parked up, walked in a little way and then kept seeing these signs. So that wasn't gonna happen, that's a shame. Yeah, I decided to come to Knit because I've got unfinished business here, of course, after the last trip was such a disaster. And this is really nice actually. It's really quiet here, much less busy than Kadar, which is lovely. So yeah, we'll have a different adventure, but it will be an adventure just the same. Only thing is, of course, I haven't got a map because I bought a map of Kada. But that's fine. I sort of know the area. I just like to have a map, you know. But yeah, it'll be okay. Made an error, guys. Left my stove at home. So I bought the canister and my cook set and everything, but the actual little stove left it at home. So no hot meal, no hot drink. No porridge or coffee in the morning. It's okay, because I have got another one in the car for my car camping. So I'm just gonna have to walk back to the car in the morning and then come back to go up connect again, but that's all right. What's an extra few miles? Jerky for tea today. It is windier than I thought it was gonna be tonight. Right, I'm going to bed. Night guys. <laughs> pretty crazy looking at the forecast before I left it was nice and still like four kilometers per hour wind and even now it says that it's 18 kilometers per hour I'm gonna get packed up and go I've got to go back to the car to get my stove I don't want to go home but I can't pitch up again unless I can find somewhere more out the winds. I mean, if I knew I was gonna have these winds, I wouldn't have pitched here, because I'm really exposed. I would have gone behind this rocky ledge, and it probably would have been all right down there. I think I can do another night. Don't think it's gonna be the summit camp I was hoping for, so this weekend it's just going all kinds of wonky again. Right, let me get back up. 
right guys I'm struggling in this wind a bit trying to walk into it he's knackering with that heavy rucksack on so I really need to eat I've got my stove now I'm gonna just try find somewhere out the wind and I think I'm just gonna pitch up because yeah this is crazy wind look how weird this is I don't know if you can see that the floor like <laughs> wobbles like it's a waterbed oh my god look that is so creepy imagine you just fall through that I bet that's like a little river underneath Jesus let's go a different way oh look at this this might work oh yeah that's out the wind a bit. I don't think I'll get better than that in a minute. Alright guys, I found somewhere that's relatively out the wind so this will be a perfect place to pitch. I'm gonna get set up now because I am knackered walking for miles in that crazy, crazy wind. made myself a little windbreak with this rock here so this will either work or it will fall over and smash all my stuff look at that I can feel my happy levels increasing amazing I can't lift this are broken or what but these winds are insane the sun has just gone below you'll do there so i'm gonna get packed up as quick as possible and try and get down yeah pole snapped disastrous wasn't it um 
ironically it was the best forecast I had had for a trip in over a year and when I saw it I could not believe my luck and that's how it went down so just goes to show you never know so on this trip I was doing what I always do and using the local weather forecast for the area that I was heading to um, this was a mistake the forecast said before I left it was going to be like four kilometer per hour winds then on the first night it changed to 18 and the night that my tent was wrecked it changed to 21 which is ridiculous it was nothing like that whatsoever it was crazy winds so out of curiosity a few hours after the tent wrecking event i was wondering if there was a way that i could find the snowden summit forecast and i was having a search on the interwebs and i found that you can in fact find the snowden summit forecast and that was saying gusts of up to 95 kilometers per hour which is insane and not something you want to be camping in. Now I of course wasn't on Snowden Summit, I was I think about 15 kilometers from Snowden and of course I was much lower down but it just goes to show the difference in the general area forecast and what's actually happening higher up in the mountains. As a side note, Ash from Ash Outdoors UK was also camping this same night and he was on Molshebod which is about 20 kilometers I think from Snowden and 20 kilometers from where I was as well and he had no issues at all he had an absolutely gorgeous night check that video up by the way stick it up here so you can see how different a camp we had on the same night in the same area and it's just crazy you just never know what's going to happen so back to where I should have been looking for a mountain weather forecast it's been brought to my attention by the lovely folk that follow my insta page that there is something called the Mountain Weather Information Service, MWIS, which you can go online and you can search by areas. So there's like Snowdonia, Scotland, lakes, and it will tell you what's happening at the summits, how that will feel for you, you know, what the visibility is like, everything you could want to know. And that's where I should have been looking for this trip. It's where I'm going to be looking in future to give me a better idea of what I'm going to be dealing with. So thank you guys for sharing that with me. This whole time I've been camping in the mountains, I've never heard of it, so that is really useful. So as for my tent poles, they're on their way to MSR repair. I believe MSR tent poles have a lifetime guarantee. So MSR did offer to replace the snapped pole, but there's another bit at the other side that's sort of come out and the string inside where the pole snapped is nearly cut through as well from the sharp metal rubbing on it so they've suggested I send it for repair instead so I'm going to be without my tent for a few weeks that's fine I just feel really grateful that the incident happened at sunset rather than when it was completely dark I wouldn't fancy making that trip in the dark because there's some pretty dodgy terrain up there I mean once you come off the paths it's all you know woo, crazy and there's a funny ground with water underneath it and all sorts of crazy stuff. In that situation the safest thing to do would probably have been to stay in my tent until morning. I would have had to take the poles out because that broken pole was so sharp that if I'd left it in it would have ripped through the tent. It potentially could have punctured my sleeping mat. It would have injured me so they would have had to come out and I'd have to use the tent as like a booby bag so it wouldn't be the best night. So I'm not going to say that I'm never going to camp in strong winds again. I am because that's part of mountain camping, it's something you have to be prepared for and ready for. However, there's a difference between the strong winds that I'm used to in the mountains. I mean, I've camped in gale force before and not had an issue, uh, but these winds were something else and those sort of winds are something that I will want to be avoiding if possible. Of course, you can't predict everything and sometimes the forecasts are wrong, sometimes it, it, you can do everything right and things go wrong. In this case, I made a mistake. I didn't look at the forecast in the right place. But even if I had, you can still get freak gusts of winds that can still come in and flatten your tent out of nowhere. So it's something you need to be prepared for. At the end of the day, a lot went wrong on this trip and it's my fault my tent got flattened. I could have gone home earlier when I realised how windy it was and I didn't. So there you go, that's what happens. So as a safety tip, uh, in this situation it's always a good idea to take a bivy bag because if your tent does fail and the poles collapse and your tent ends up getting ripped and say it's raining and really cold 
that's going to be a dangerous situation. So if you've got a bivy bag just to cover your sleeping mat and your sleeping bag, you might not have the most comfortable night, but you're going to survive it and you're going to be absolutely fine. So I didn't have one. I never take one on my mountain trips because I keep trying to get my weight down because it's quite a struggle already with what I've got. But this is something I'm going to consider going forward. It's just something to bear in mind, you know, it can make all the difference in a really bad situation. That's about it, I guess. Thank you so much for watching this trip to Knit, the mountain that continues to kick my backside. I might go back a third time. I might not. We'll see. Maybe it'll be third time lucky. Apologies, this was supposed to be like a really long video of three nights on a beautiful trip and it just didn't go that way at all. Um, but I'm planning the next trip, <laughs> not to commit, so I'm excited about that. I do have to wait till I've got my tent back, of course, so I'll be doing some little local trips in the meantime. So yeah, have a great week, you guys, and I will see you soon. Bye!